Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to talk about a couple things in this video. We're going to talk about what I charge to do these floors plus the patio we're doing in back. And then the other thing we'll talk about is the secret ingredient that we use that allows us to pour the concrete the way we do it. I get a lot of comments about, oh, the concrete's too wet, no matter if I'm on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or wherever it is, everybody's saying the concrete's wet, It's the concrete's wet. Well, what they don't know is we use a secret ingredient. So concrete guys like myself, guys that actually do it professionally and know about concrete, understand what this secret ingredient is and what it does. But the, most people don't. They just see concrete as, oh man, that stuff's wet. You're just going to weaken it. We know you can't pour wet concrete. And we don't know why you're pouring it this wet if you do it professionally. So <laughs> I'm going to give away the secret right now, guys. It's called water reducer. It's an admixture they batch into the concrete when they load the concrete trucks. So how do water reducers work? I mean, how can you how can you decrease the water but still have a workable mix? It's by using water reducers. So the water reducer's main job is so you don't have to use as much water but you can still have a high flow rate on the concrete like we do right here on this garage. I mean, it looks really loose, but we didn't get it that way by using water. We used a chemical admixture called water reducer. So basically, what, what the water reducer does is the materials, the cement particles, they work through electrostatic repulsion. So basically, all the cement grains in the concrete mix they have like different electrical charges and they want to kind of come together they want to kind of clump together just naturally well what the water reducer does is it gives it gives everything in the concrete a negative charge so it kind of wants to repel each other and it doesn't allow it to clump up which makes it more flowable and that's kind of the just just a really basic um, definition or explanation of what's going on in there so kind of another way to look at it is it is if if like you have two similarly charged magnets that kind of want to repel each other I don't know if you have you ever done that held two magnets up against each other and they kind of want to they don't they want they don't want to stick to each other they want to repel each other that's kind of how water reducer works in concrete it it makes all the ingredients kind of want to repel each other so basically the concrete you're looking at here that we're pouring today is gonna is in 28 days this stuff's gonna break out even stronger than concrete would if you were pouring let's say a four inch slump without the water reducer so 3500 psi we're pouring you know they they might they might break it at seven days they might break it at 21 days they might break it at 28 days and just test all the different days in between but at 28 days this stuff will probably break at 4000 psi not 3500 because we're using the water reducer so and you know one of the reasons we use it and we pay a little extra for it is as you can see it just helps make make the pour go a little bit easier i mean <clears throat> this job's hard enough as it is so why would we want to make our jobs harder when we have to do it every single day for you know we live in maine so we got to get we got to get about 12 months of work in in about eight months of good weather up here because we can't pour too much concrete outside like this from December, you know, January, February, and March. It's just usually too cold, too snowy, or just the weather's not good enough. So we got to do, you know, a, let's, this is a 1,600 square foot garage here we're doing. Um, you probably could see in the beginning where there, was a, there was a big house with this. There's a patio with it. So we're doing at least at least one of these jobs a day and a lot of times we'll do more than one we'll do a couple a day you know and try to make up for the three or four months when we don't have good weather where we can't pour concrete so that's that's the secret ingredient guys water reducers so you don't have to you don't have to get on here in the comments and say the concrete's way too wet you guys you guys don't know what you're doing um you know we've all been doing it a long long time i've been doing it 42 years Darren, the guy in the blue shirt on the left, he's been doing it 30. Luke in the back in the dark blue, he's been doing it, you know, probably 25. And then Eric, the guy here closest to you, he's been doing it at least 25 years for us. So 
with four guys, there's well over 100 years of experience here just pouring concrete floors. Look at that stuff flow. I mean, if you if you pull the water reducer out of this mix, if there's a way you could pull it out and and see what the slump would be like in the truck without it, it, it would barely be coming down the chute. You know, it'd be like a three-inch slump, three or four-inch slump coming down the chute. So you just put that, basically it's like 15 ounces per yard of concrete of this water reducer that allow it to be flowable like this. So if you got any questions on that, just leave them down in the comments. If you kind of know already about water reducers, if you already use them, let me know down in the comments what you like about them or if you dislike anything about them. We haven't found nowadays, we haven't found anything we dislike about using them. We can, you know, when the truck shows up on the job and we tell him what we want for a slump, let's say we tell him a five and a half, a six, or a six and a half, and let's say we tell him a six, and it comes out, you know, a little stiffer than what we want. Well, it's okay if he gives it a few gallons of water because there's hardly any water in the mix anyway to begin with. So you can still give it a little bit of water on the job if you need the concrete to get up to where you need it to, the slump you need it to, you know, and we... We'll go between either using a mid-range water reducer or a high-range water reducer. So for mid-range, this is probably on the higher end of a slump for a mid-range. You know, if you get up to a slump like this, I don't know what that is. It's probably like a seven, seven and a half, eight slump. You're probably going to want to use a high-range water reducer, which is what we use a lot. And then you can just see how nice and flowable that is, how easy that is to screed or rod the concrete and get that down to where we need it. Now that garage, that pitches three inches from where we are up there and back to the front doors. And it has a three inch slope in it. And even at the slump we're pouring it at, it doesn't want to sag. It's not going to sag being even this loose. So it's just, you know, we know what we're doing. We do it every day. But I just wanted to make sure you guys knew what this secret ingredient was. It seems like there's a lot of people out there who are uneducated about concrete. but they want to they want to comment they want to talk about like they are educated about it and it, they it, you're just really not you know i don't know how else to say it but you're not so here i am trying to educate you a little bit on on how to use a little bit higher slump concrete without hurting the strength of the concrete all right so the other thing i said we talk about is cost you know kind of how i price stuff like this and you know when we're doing it on a daily basis there's, there's a couple ways I think most guys price their concrete jobs. Now, we just do flat work. We don't do the concrete walls. Most of the guys up here in Maine, they don't like doing flat work. If they do the walls, they just like sticking to the walls. So we just specialize in doing the flat work. So from floors to slabs to patios to pool decks, stamp concrete, you know, walkways, anything flat will do that type of stuff. Now for these, for these floors right here, it's a pretty basic cost or price, uh, pricing for us, the way I estimate them. And I've kind of figured it out over the years how to do it by the, just by the square foot and be able to make a, a profit on it. You know, obviously to stay in business for 42 years, you, hopefully you're making a profit. So the, kind of how I do it is, you know, four inches of concrete will do about 80 square feet. So if let's just say the concrete cost you 200 bucks a yard, just for a nice round number, it's going to be different wherever you are, I know. But let's just say it's 200 bucks a yard for, for your concrete mix, and that mix will go 80 square feet. So if you figure that out, $200 divided by 80 comes out to 2.5. So it costs you $2.50 just to buy the concrete. So $2.50 a square foot just to buy the concrete here. And then for labor, what I do is I'm generally about three bucks a square foot labor. So that includes the cost of labor. You know, we're all on, I'm a, I'm a corporation, so we're all on payroll. As a matter of fact, I do the payroll. So I, I pay myself a payroll check. I pay Darren, Luke a payroll check, uh, Eric a payroll check, you know, and then obviously I got to take taxes out of that and I got to pay, pay in my taxes and then... You know, everything else, or the cost of everything else is on top of that. I have workman's comp insurance, so I actually have business insurance, you know, auto insurance, general liability insurance, all the other costs associated with doing these is built into that 
square foot price for what I call my labor price. So the labor, the cost of labor is built in there. And then the, the, the profit margin is kind of built in there too, somewhat. So three bucks a square foot for the garage floor part. And then for the broom finish stuff like this, you know, I get uh, five bucks a square foot for labor. Because most of the time, broom finish stuff, there isn't as much square footage as, say, a bigger floor like that garage or this house is going to be. So you got to get a little bit more uh, labor rate. And obviously, like, we have a minimum labor charge, too, for small stuff. So it'll be anything really small will be 2500 bucks. So what that means is basically anything under 500 square feet is going to be a minimum of 2500 bucks labor, you know, plus the concrete. So then anything over that is just the $5 a square foot labor rate. So for the let's go back to the garage floor for a sec. So $2.50 for the concrete, 3 bucks for the labor. So that gets you to $5.50 for us to supply the concrete, pour and finish it and saw it. And then the garage floor also had wire mesh in it. So if I'm if I'm buying the wire mesh and I'm going to lay the, the wire mesh, install the wire mesh, the wire mesh, you know, a 5 by 10 sheet is about 16, 17 bucks. It has been at least, or let's just say it's 20 bucks. So that's going to be, I usually charge that out at about 50 cents a square foot, the wire mesh. So that's what might cost to buy it and get it delivered. And then my cost, if I'm going to lay it down and get it tied and everything, get it nice and straight, I'm charging a buck a square foot on top of that for labor. So another dollar fifty for the wire. So that gets us a dollar fifty for the wire, three bucks for the labor, pour and finish and saw, two fifty for the concrete. You know, now you're talking five fifty, six, seven bucks a square foot to get a garage floor poured like that. You know, including the concrete and the wire mesh. That doesn't include the, the grade and the subgrade. That doesn't include the styrofoam. You know, obviously it doesn't include the radiant heat. That's done by somebody else. Uh, if I do do the styrofoam, the two inches of styrofoam, you know, I'm, again, I'm going to charge to to buy that. That stuff is like, I figure that to buy that, it's like two bucks a square foot just to buy the four by eight sheet of styrofoam. That might be a little heavy. But that's going to cover my cost of delivery too, and then again, I'm another dollar a square foot to lay it. So it's about three bucks. Add three bucks a square foot on that if you want two inches of styrofoam down. So that's going to get you up around ten bucks. So if you follow all that, just to give you an idea of what all that stuff can can be, and then you know for the patios like this, again five bucks a square foot labor. 250 for the concrete. Uh, if you want a matter rebar in it, that's I usually, you know, obviously I charge extra for the matter rebar. Kind of depends on how close together the bars are. Uh, I might do that. I, I might do that just by the by the bar, or I might do that by the square foot too, depending on, you know, just how big the area is. But we'll a lot of times we'll put number three bar in something like this if the, the guys don't want wire meshing it. We actually we didn't spec out anything on the, these jobs. The builder did. He's the, you can see him, he's up there kind of laying the styrofoam now. So those guys specced everything out. We just kind of showed up to pour and finish here today. But that gives you a little bit of an idea on pricing. And so when somebody calls me for a price, you know, I can say, well, what is it? You got a four inch floor you want? You want wire in it? Uh, you want me to buy the concrete? Uh, do, you, do you need styrofoam down up here in Maine? Styrofoam's kind of code. So most people have to put it underneath their floors or patios. So it's kind of it's pretty standard up here in Maine. So a lot of the stuff we do, if we're if we're buying the wire and buying the styrofoam and, and installing it, a lot of the stuff we do is is you know ten bucks a square foot minimum just to just to get us there and get this thing done. And again, on a on a simple basic broom finish patio like this. You know, with the, with the styrofoam and the wire, we're probably going to be up around $12, $13 a square foot. So let me know what you guys think about that pricing. If you guys price stuff differently, if you price it by the yard or, or why you price it by the yard versus by the square foot. And we can talk in the comments. We can debate that a little bit in the comments. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.